So now as I am just summing it up, the researchers are often interested in inhomogeneity is 1 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. Uh, so precipitates in solids, micelles in liquids, proteins, pores in a medium. And I must mention here the small angle neutron scattering and small angle X-ray scattering, SANS and SACS are important experimental tools across communities. But here, the thing is that I am doing experiments at a very low angle. So that means, you please consider the case that I have got a sample and then I have got a detector, I have got a direct beam width and I have got a diffracted beam somewhere here. The fact is that because I am going to very very small angles, very small angles, I need to be careful that I don't go and intercept the direct beam. So I am almost in direct beam. So for that matter, I have to then collimate the direct beam to a large extent that means I have to reduce the delta theta and this is possible by using collimators in the beam path but at a cost. When you put collimators in the beam path you get a smaller angular spread but your number of neutrons go down because you are cutting down the num their numbers by putting collimators. So that is why again that when you use a cold the small angle neutron scattering instrument on a cold neutron source you start with a larger number of neutrons that's where the importance of the cold neutron source comes into picture that so you use a highly collimated beam in case of a small angle neutron scattering and then you are doing the experiment almost at the direct beam part in the direct beam part so quick look to the findings that you can see schematically. Here I am doing a Fourier transform over density. I have done it earlier. Actually if you remember when I talked about form factor for a spherical electronic charge distribution in an atom, I got exactly the same expression except some constants like 1 by V. So this is the structure factor or sorry the form this is the form factor for a charge distribution like this. Now instead of electronic charge distribution if I take a scattering length density distribution so please look at this figure so I have these objects I have these objects they become gradually larger in this becoming larger they have their sizes so now I can talk to electron instead of scattering length density instead of electronic density I am talking about scattering length density of these objects. If I want to see that, then I do a scattering experiment and I measure IQ. Now when the objects are smaller, then IQ falls lower. You know if these objects are delta functions, I showed you earlier, it is constant all over Q because a delta function is a constant in Q space, a delta function in real space. As the objects becomes larger and larger, your IQ falls faster and faster and the typical size is given, it's a typical size given by twice by t. So I can look at the size of these particles looking at the intensity profile in a scattering experiment. But please remember it is not just qualitative. Very shortly, I will come to the expressions that I can use to get size of such particles. So the small angle neutron scattering, you can see that it is it's really almost close to the direct beam the detector. Sometimes we use a position sensitive detector. I will show you the instrument in Dhruva which uses a position sensitive detector. The Q range, you can see typically 0 0.001 to 1 angstrom inverse. Lambda is equal to 4 to 10 angstrom and the 2 theta, the scattering angle is typically around 0.5 to 10 degrees. So 
let's see if I talk about a four angstrom beam. Four angstrom beam. So please note Q is equal to. I chose it so that I can cancel some of the constants quickly. Okay. Lambda is four angstrom sine theta. So I call it at low angle. I call assumes sine theta equal to theta. So it is pi theta. So typically, if I talk about pi theta, if uh, Q is 0 0.001, let us say, then theta will be 0 0.001 by pi in radians. So it will be into 1, 180 by pi. If I go to theta, it will be around 2 degrees. I request you to please do this simple calculation and check. So we have to go to very very low Q even with a 4 angstrom neutron. If we use a neutron which is a, let us say 3 angstrom or 2 angstrom because if I don't have a cold source then I may not be able to choose 4 angstrom because the numbers will be less. If I go to smaller wavelength I need to go to say from 4 angstrom to 2 angstrom from 2 degree I need to measure at 1 degree and I have to restrict my direct beam much below 1 degree so that I can do the experiments. So this is the small angle neutron scattering and now my intensity is restricted on the lower side in the Q or in the small angle with the direct beam and I keep measuring as a function of angle and on the higher side my Q max is restricted by the background. This is an important factor because Wherever you do the experiment, either inside a reactor hall or in a neutron guide hall, you have background neutrons. And background neutrons, when your intensity, because it is falling with Q, when it matches the background, then I can stop the experiment. I have to stop the experiment because now I have gone into the background. So Q minimum and Q maximum are dictated by the direct beam and the background. And the sample to in the on the sample the signal to background ratio. Now I will quickly and briefly take you to the theory of sounds. You will be able to appreciate it. If you see, as I told you a few slides earlier, that I have a matrix and I have these particles which I want to study. These are the particles. So now Earlier also, when I did the X-ray scattering or neutron, if you remember, this was the expression for the scattering amplitude. Amplitude. This A. But there, it was, uh, there was an FJ and a structure factor. And Q had to become equal to G because it is a uh, crystallographic material. But this Fj is the Fourier transform of the electronic charge in case of X-rays. In case of neutrons, I replace that with Bj, the coherent scattering, which is gave me a which gave me a delta function in Q space. But this Fj is a Fourier transform of the electronic charge density, and in this case, it's a Fourier transform over this. This is the form factor. So, in lecture 3, I introduced you to this form factor for atoms for the electronic charge density. Here, I am introducing the same thing with respect to this kind of objects. What are these objects? I will use the simplest example. For example, uh, I have, uh, let's say, I have a liquid in which I put the surfactant molecules which has got a hydrophilic head group and a hydrophobic tail group. So up to a certain density, they will be sitting on the surface, the tail sticking out and the heads on the water. If you keep increasing the density, now to hide from the water, this is how the structure will form. It will be a near spherical, not always spherical, 
but here the head group looks out to the water because it is hydrophilic and the tail group is inside. So this is called a micelle in chemistry. Now you see this is the object and I am looking at the form factor of this object instead of Fj. So now it is, this is now depending on the scattering length density which I discussed earlier. So I measured the scattering length density and also now I have got a, got a scattering length density contrast because you have a matrix here the matrix is water so water has got a so I can say SLD of H2O and SLD scattering length density the object and I, there must be some contrast if there is no contrast this is like putting glass inside water if I put a piece of glass inside water, the refractive indices match, you can't see the glass. It's very similar to that. You have put an object whose scattering length density is same with water, you can't see in this scattering experiment because it is as good as the entire matrix. But when there is a scattering length contrast, that means this scattering length is not equal to the scattering length of density of matrix the they different then you can see them and you can measure the reflected not reflected I'm sorry the scattered intensity at small angle and you can find the form factor that means the shape and size of this particle you can study using this technique and it's very important so now let's say the form factor let us take a spherically symmetric object so there this also I had introduced earlier, it is very simple. If you consider a sphere of density rho, then e to the power i q dot r, then you have to integrate, if it is a spherical particle, then it is r square dr d theta d phi for a spherically symmetric object. So it becomes e to the power i q r cos theta sin theta d theta 0 to pi then you have r square dr and the phi gives you 2 pi so now this I will give you hints I don't, I don't want to do the whole derivation for you but you can see 0 to pi e to the power i q r cos theta sin theta d theta is same as minus 1 to 1 e to the power i q alpha let us call it d alpha if I consider cos theta equal to alpha this is very easy to do the integration and ultimately what you get with this integration the form factor for a spherical symmetric object which is this and this under low q when q is going to 0 comes to I am sorry about this there is a mistake it is e to the power minus q square by 3 rg square so instead here this rg is a radius of gyration this is 3 fifth r square per sphere why let me just quickly show you see r square average that is rg squared nothing but r square integrated over a sphere and then the r value probability is 4 pi r square dr for a shell do this with r to the power 4 4 pi goes out it becomes r to the power 5 by 5 and then it's 4 with outside so it comes to 3 fifth g square please derive this now if this relationship known as Guinea relationship is rho square which is a contrast not just the density density contrast v0 is the volume of each particle into this is wrong 
e to the power minus q square by 3 rg square. Here you can see if I put log of iq then plot it against q square that will be a straight line and that slope of the straight line will give me rg radius of gyration. I have used an example from this thing. Is a pleuronic is a triblock copolymer which is soluble in water and dissolved in D2O actually because this is a hydrogenous, this polymer is a hydrogenous sample. If you put it in H2, you can't see. So it is dissolved in D2O. I will talk about something called a contrast factor shortly. If I, you can see this is an experimental result. So it's called a guinea plot for small angle or sans data taken from 10% gram by gram P85 pleuronic in D2O at 20 degrees centigrade. The slope of the thing gives you the RG. Sometimes it's called hydrodynamic radius also here or you can see this is the average R value for SCL. So this is the finding. So now you can see that this experiment tells me that pleuronic forms uh, falls the coils into a sphere of this size when I do a measurement in the low Q region and please note the Q square 0.0002 to 0.0016 so Q is actually here square root of this square root of 0.0016 is equal to 16 10 to the power minus 4 so it is 4 into 10 to the power minus 2 so this is 0 0.004 and so so we have to go really really low Q values for this experiment. I will stop here and go to the next model shortly.